So I'm uh, Eric Rylander, the head of Stockholm Data Parks at Stockholm Exergy. I believe that uh, in the future, data centers will play an increasingly important role in the urban energy system uh, as they bring in lots of infrastructure and also the ability to, to actually contribute to, to uh, the urban energy system in a way that I think they have not thought of before. Because data centers used to think of themselves as you know, very self-sufficient, they, they take care of whatever problems they have themselves and they are not sharing very much uh, because that's the easiest way to operate and, and, and has been seen as the most cost-efficient way to operate. But I think in the future, in order to become more sustainable and also more cost-efficient, uh, integration outside the data center walls is, is really what they should look into because by integrating into the urban energy system, they will first of all be able to use, to, to increase the utilization of their equipment and also get paid for it. And when they do that, they are actually contributing to something that is making the city more sustainable because with the resources brought to the city by the data centers, we will be able to, for example, reuse the energy that is created in the data center, the waste that is, but also in the power system, because power is getting increasingly scarce, or capacity, power capacity, in, in urban areas. And, and data centers have, so far, they have, when they are looking for locations where to go, they are always looking for, you know, looking for space, they're looking for power grid capacity and connectivity. And up till now, I think it has been possible to find all these components in the same place. but. In the future, I think that what we see right now is in, in basically all urban areas, power grid capacity is really becoming scarce. And, and data centers being the organisms they are, with, with, they are able to generate power themselves, they are, they are able to go off grid, they are, all, they are even able to, they would be able at least, to insert power into the public grid. That is very valuable in the future, I think, because that is what it takes to make more space in the urban realm for data centers in the future. Because if we are only working the way we've always done, there will not, it will not be possible to fit data centers in urban environments in the future, because it's, it's full. It's, the, the power grid cannot take any more loads, and infrastructure cannot be expanded at the pace which would be expected from the data center industry. So companies like mine or the, the, the Stockholm XG, we will not be able to in, uh, expand our infrastructure to meet the needs of the data centers if we are not starting to collaborate more. Because when we collaborate, we can use the resources we have and the resources that the data centers bring in order to, to solve our our challenges and to, to, to meet the challenges that we, we are facing. When the data centers want to grow at a certain pace and, and we want to be able to make that happen and we also want to make them become more sustainable by integrating them into the city. I think that actually in markets like the UK market, I think it's more common today than it is in, for example, the Nordics uh, because of regulatory issues uh, So so and also probably you know, the reason for the Nordics trading a bit could be that there has always been abundant power capacity in, in the Nordics, so that has, there has been no reason to, to look into these uh, business models before. But we are, are rapidly approaching a point where it's also needed in the Nordics. And I think that uh, you need a regulatory framework, obviously, that would allow for this kind of, of collaboration and, and integration. Uh, but because the technology is there, I mean, just like you said, Ethan has the technology already. Their UPSs work perfectly fine with balancing the power grid, for example. Uh, and so, so technology is there. What you need is a regulatory framework, and then you need the business models that gives the economic incentive to be part of such a scheme. Because if it's only something that is perceived as complicated, then it won't happen. So it, it will happen the day when it's easily accessible and 
there is a economic upside to be part of it for the data center, then it will happen. And I believe all the components are there already because there is a value to bring these kind of capacities into the, the, the power grid and the system. Uh, but all the, the, the business framework, so to say, has not been worked out yet. And part of it is regulatory when it comes to when, who can do this because it usually uh, involves the, the, um, the transmission system owners. So the, so the national grid owners are usually part of such a model and they need to be ready to take on these different data centers. And I think that then that's another thing where the, where the energy utilities can play a role together with the data center because a single data center may not be big enough to have a place in this scheme, but data centers being aggregated by a utility, for example, Stockholm XG, they would, the aggregated mass of that will have a, 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 a natural role in the power grid as a whole. So I think that that's another thing where the, the, the um, collaboration between utilities and data centers may, may, is key to, to future success. Reusing waste heat is much easier if you have the distribution system in place. And also, you need to have a demand for heat. <laughs> yeah. Without the demand for heat, nothing will happen. So, so those two components, if you have them, good for you. If you don't, you need to work on it. And I think a demand for heat is, is present in every city, at least parts of the year. Uh, so I think that the way to tackle this problem when the, when the distribution system is not in place is to start locally in islands. So you start building you know, small islands where you are reusing heat and eventually you will have several of those and you can interconnect them. So, so or the, the system will sort of grow organically. That's the way it has actually been done in Stockholm as well. We started out in the 50s building the district heating system that today compri comprises 2,800 kilometers of pipes. Yeah. So this has taken us 70 years. Uh, but, and, and, but you shouldn't be discouraged by that. Uh, I think that it's never too late to start as long as it's a good idea, something that takes us to a more sustainable future and also something that would bring money, revenue to the parties participating that will always be a good idea. So, so, and also, you shouldn't be discovered, discouraged by the fact that it might not be possible to, to reuse the heat all around the year, but only in the colder season. And, and, uh, but but in, at least from my point of view, it's much better to reuse the heat in the colder part of the season than not at all. So it's, let's start where it's easy. Start reusing your heat locally. Start reusing the heat during the cold part of the year. and. Don't, don't let the, the fact that you will still be wasting the heat in the summertime discourage you from starting. When it comes to other cities like London, Amsterdam, Frankfurt and so on, the data center industry is, really, is already established at a, a much larger scale than it's a fact in Stockholm, for example. So, I mean, there are other advantages in, in cities like, like those. Uh, so it's just the other, you know, the other side of the coin, really. The, the, the infrastructure needs to come in place. The data centers are already there. In our case, we started Stockholm Data Parks in order to attract more data centers to Stockholm in order to be able to reuse their energy, right? So, so we are looking for the investment. The investment has already been done in, for example, London, Frankfurt, and, and Amsterdam. So, so there are, you need all these pieces of the puzzle, and in some cities you have some of the pieces, and some in other cities you have other pieces of the puzzle. Well, it's always a benefit to come here and to, to share ideas, listen to, to especially the new ideas uh, that, that uh, many companies will bring to the, to the scenes here. Uh, it, always, you, you also meet all your, your um, you know, colleagues. <laughs> Uh, even though I'm not really in this business from the start, I have come to know quite a few people in the business. Uh, and, and it's an easy way to, to meet with this, these guys and to catch up on what happened the last few months since you saw, saw each other last time. So, so networking and, and uh, the sharing of ideas is really the reason for me coming here. You always need face-to-face -face meetings, either if you arrange them at the, at, at the scene like this, uh, or if you, you know, meet somewhere else at some other time. The, the, the benefit of these uh, events is that everybody's gathered here, so you can quite efficiently have very, quite a few meetings uh, in, a, in a short period of time, and you don't have to travel very much, which is also good sustainability-wise. Uh, so, so, uh, so bringing the industry together like this is always an opportunity to meet 
all the people that you want to meet at the, at the, in, in a short period of time. And, and, uh, and naturally, you need face-to-face -face meetings. You cannot not only stand on a stage and talk to people, you need, you need a conversation. Uh, uh, so, so it's, it's uh, standing on stage is good for, for spreading the word, but, but when it comes to really uh, going deep into finding ways to collaborate, then you need face-to-face -face meetings. So at the next year's uh, Energy Smart, we, we are hoping to uh, bring even more uh, interesting people to Stockholm uh, to, to discuss and share ideas on how we build a more sustainable future together because we think that sustainability and energy consumption, is our, they, th those two questions are really linked. And uh, we believe that there are ways to, to uh, support the growth of this industry on a sustainable path. And, and uh, there are many ideas, quite a few of them were discussed in today's panel uh, on how that can be done. Uh, and we, we are really looking forward to continue that discussion in Stockholm in, in, in April.